Well, it's good to be back with you. Glad that the Lord is merciful and kind and good. I've got a a story here that I'm going to read to you that we've all heard many times before. Um, I have spoke on it many times before, but it's sort of a lot like your favorite food. If a person enjoys spaghetti, and I do, I like spaghetti, um, you have a desire that you want more of it. You know, spaghetti is better when you mix the meat and the noodles together and you put it in the refrigerator overnight. And the next day, you're able to get you a good helping of the spaghetti with the meat sauce entangled with the macaroni. There's just something about the seasoning. And you know what? That's the way the Word of God is. When you read a story and you think you know the story so well that you tell yourself, well, is there anything new I can learn? Well, that's exactly the reason I'm going to read this story today. Because I do believe that it could be something that we could learn something. In Acts chapter 9 is the story of where Saul meets the Lord. And we've all heard the story, but I want to read it to you again. It says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. This doesn't sound like a man that has a lot of peace inside. This sounds like a man that has a lot of hatred inside. This man was religious in his own, in his own right. He didn't know the Lord for his salvation. Um, he knew the synagogues and he knew the high priest and he knew the form of religion. And I think a lot of people knows the form of religion. They just don't know the Christ. Uh, one of the questions that I asked myself before I come out to turn the tape machine on, do you suppose that Saul was glad that the Lord showed up that day? Now here in these, just these two verses that I read here so far, We see a man that is filled with hate and discontent, anger. You got to remember the chapter before he had just allowed the killing of Stephen. Do you think Saul would have allowed that killing if he would have known that God was going to get his attention just another chapter away? that God was going to ultimately meet him on that road to Damascus. I believe that Stephen's mission was accomplished, and that's the reason that Stephen was allowed to get off the stage, so to speak. And I believe it's now time for Saul to pick up the load and pick up the mantle of God's perfect will. Let's read on And as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly 
there shined round about him a light from heaven. Now, the Bible says it's a light. And this light was a bright and shining light. And he was able to notice that bright and shining light because the scripture just said that there was a light and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, I do not believe that at the time Saul knew that he had been persecuting the real Jesus. And the reason I say that is because he was only religious. He never really knew the real Jesus. He knew religion. There's a lot of people that knows religion, but they might not know the real Jesus. And I believe that this man here didn't know the real Jesus. And Stephen was a man that believed in God and trusted in God and loved God. And this man, Saul, really thought that he was a fake. And he said that if I get letters from Damascus to go and lock up these people, I can bring them bound, meaning with their hands tied behind their back. I can bring them to the chief priests where they can do what they want to with them. And I really think that this man Saul really thought that these people were a bunch of pretenders. But this man Saul was going to learn that these people wasn't a bunch of pretenders. Because the Lord himself spoke to Saul and he got his attention when he said his name twice. Why persecutest thou me? Don't you think that he was beginning to wonder like, hmm, Lord, did I persecute people? I imagine he's starting to think about the people that he actually ramrodded. He's thinking about people, and I'm sure that maybe Stephen is the one that he's thinking about now while he's sitting on the ground. And listen to what Saul said to the Lord. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? He had enough sense to call the Lord, Lord. He didn't see no man other than that light. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now the pricks is always something that always wonders a lot of people. But a prick is a lot like a goad. A goad is something a lot like a cowboy would wear on the heel of his boot. And it would be a sharp, sharp contraption that when he would kick the animal, it would make the animal go. It, it's, it's the things that go on the cowboy boot. There's a name for them, but I can't remember the name. But you, you get what I'm getting at. It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks, the Lord said. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? You know, that's a question that I think that all of mankind needs to ask themselves. Lord, what do you have for me to do? 
See, we always want to put it on the preacher. It's the preacher's job. It's the minister's job. It's the pastor's job. No, the Lord was asking this man Saul here, Lord, what would you have me to do? Now, part of my thinking when I come out here was, was so glad that the Lord came to him. Was so at this point glad to be set on the right road in the right direction when he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise. Do you think that Paul was glad to hear the Lord tell him to arise, to get up off the ground, to arise and stand to your feet and go into the city? And it shall be told thee what thou must do. Do you think that there was a little bit of gladness in this man named Saul that was all of a sudden now happy that the Lord cared enough for Saul to get his attention, to tell him the truth, to face Saul down and for the, and for Saul to face this light down that God cared enough to send him a light. He cared enough to send him a light because it goes on to say and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but seeing no man Well, the Bible didn't say that the Lord showed up. The Bible just said that the light showed up. I happen to believe that the Lord was in that light, and that light wasn't meant for them men. It was meant for the one that the Lord went to. The Bible didn't say that they stood speechless and they heard a voice. They didn't see who the voice was. They didn't know where the voice was coming from. Do you suppose that Saul was now happy at the fact that the Lord was getting his attention, that as he kept walking and as he kept hearing, he was told what he should do to go into the town? These men that were with him, they hearing a voice but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. That means that his eyes must have been closed to that bright light. But do you suppose that God was able to deal with this man named Saul in a way that he would have never dreamed of. I guess my, my, I want to get back to my focus. Do you suppose that Saul was relieved in joy that the Lord took time to come down to earth with the light that came from heaven and cared enough about this man named Saul to tell him to go into the street that is called straight because there's somebody that's going to pray for you. We're going to read on a little bit. But they led him by the hand. These men now was the ones that was with him They led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days 
without sight, and neither did not eat or drink. He lost a lot of his senses of things that he and he enjoyed. He enjoyed eating. I enjoy eating. I started out this message explaining the advantages of putting spaghetti and the sauce together. I enjoy eating. But he found something here that food or drink didn't help him in this situation. The bottom line today of today's message is the Lord wants to give joy to people that don't have joy. The Lord came to this man named Saul to get his attention. He was sincere in his so-called religion, but he didn't know the Christ. But as soon as he got up and he stood to his feet, he knew that he had an encounter with the Lord. And the question that I can pose to the audience today is, have you had an encounter with the Lord? Has the Lord come to you in the form of that light. Now, I agree that maybe the Lord doesn't do that today like he did, but who is to say? The Lord came to me when I needed salvation, that it wasn't in the form of a bright light. No, it was in the form of an open Bible. The last time I remember reading in John chapter 1, the Bible even says that he is the light, capital L. That light of the word of God came to me that night. And I was able to have my light on like I've got my light on here. And I was reading Jonah chapter one. And that light from the word of God, jumped off the pages and jumped inside me. I wanted to know salvation, and I believe that God wanted to change Saul so that he would have true salvation. And I believe that in this story that I just read, that this man Saul got true salvation when he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? That was his sinner's prayer. Was he praying to the Lord when he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? No, I don't think he was praying. I think he was talking to the Lord, just like I'm talking to the camera today. I'm looking at the hole where the camera is today. And I'm talking to people out there in YouTube and Facebook. Has the Lord come to you and spoken to you? Has his light come to you in the form of his word? In the form of words that was said? You remember where we just read down here that the men which journeyed with him, stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. The Bible says it was a lot that came to Saul. Now, could Saul have saw the Lord Jesus? He said, he, he told him out there, Who art thou, Lord? He must have seen the Lord in that light for him to say them words. Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. You don't ever find where Saul is guilty of persecution after this. You see a man 
that is humble, that has humility. That's what the Lord wants to do today. He wants to bring humility. He wants to get people's attention. He wants to bring joy. Did he bring joy to this man named Saul? I believe he did. Does the Lord want to bring joy today in our world in 2020? I believe he does. And it starts by Saul saying, Lord, what would you have me to do? That's a question you need to ask yourself today. Elderlyministry.com is the website. You're welcome to give me a call. There's a phone number there. Just pull the tab down and you'll see the phone number. Please leave a message when you call. I get a lot of calls with very few messages. Please take the time to leave a message. Thank y'all for watching.